تبارك الله رب العالمين الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي جعل ذكره طمأنينة للقلوب وجلاء لها عذرين الذنوب ومطرات لوسواس الخناس المكذوب والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الداعي إلى كل فعل محبوب وأمر مطلوب وعلى آله وأصحابه المقتفين سبيله على خير أسلوب أما بعد فيقول رب تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المنزل بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون والذين هم عن اللغو معرضون صدق الله العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى says successful are those the believers who are attentive in their prayer who have khushu in their prayer and those who abstain away from vain pursuits we are now in our eighth lesson on the development of our prayer last week we dealt with adhan and the role of adhan in fostering concentration the tension in your prayer and i explained to you that the human being is susceptible to messages and that we are exposed to thousands of messages every day and in fact according to one study 5000 up to 7000 messages every day directly and indirectly through advertising and all of these messages that messages that call to success and to better betterment of life in this world and many of those messages in fact the vast majority of the messages are inaccurate they are exaggerations and sometimes blunt b- clear lies as we have i gave you the example of the tobacco industry as a result of their extraordinary marketing capacity and their the the, the wealth that they put in the marketing and their expertise in marketing and the triumph of their ability to carry their message in this century one billion human beings will die and as i said this is not my figure this is the world health organization by the year 2025 500 million human beings will die as a result of smoking that is the figure and yet people are in doubt seven of every 10 people who smoke will die of it but because of this expert marketing, we are yet not able to make the decision and say that I will avoid these poisons because of the excessive marketing that goes on. So the human being is susceptible. If with the correct marketing, then you can get them to buy anything and do anything. And I said that in balance against these, seven, these five or seven thousand, you're receiving seven thousand messages, you should have an antidote, you should have something that, that reminds you, a message that reminds you of not the success and the beauty and the glitter of this world, but the success of the world to come, the success of the world in which you will definitely go. The bigger plan, the greater goal in life should be to prepare for success beyond this world, because that is where you will go. From the day you're born, you began to die. Every day is a day, a closest, a step closer to your grave. And no one can claim that I will not die. We all know that our ultimate destination in this world is the grave. And then from there on, there is either tragedy that exceeds whatever good. If you meet good in the grave, then whatever is after it is better. And if you meet bad in the grave, then whatever is after it is worse. So the Adhan was to punctuate was to give you that chance to recognize that, look, when the mu'adhin says, Hayya ala salah, hayya ala al-falah, this is the true success. This is not an exaggerated message. This is not a 
a message that was designed by some PR company. This is a true message. This is a solid message that when he says come towards success, when that he says hayya al falah, falah is the one. The translation of falah is the one who man man zafara bi bughiyatihi, the one who gets what he wants, what he intends. He sets a goal and he gets it. That is the fa falah, the one who who indulge who has falah. Now these same these two hayya al salah. Hayya al fala are connected in the verse I read to you earlier, where Rasulullah before this verse was revealed, the Muslims would pray and look around and look left, right, and center. It was allowed, but after this verse was revealed in Surah Al Mu'minun, قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون. That successful are the ones. أفلح the same word Hayya al fala the fala the success. Your call to is the one whose salah has khushu in it, who has attention and drawing of the focus towards the one and only Allah. If your salah is such, then you will attain true success in this world. And this is what the verse is calling you towards. And it says, "Alladina hum ani lagwi muridun." Those people who are who are who do not spend too much of their time, who do not allow themselves to be drawn into lagwi. Lagu is vain, things that are not beneficial for you. And that we have, we have it in abundance in our world today. From all the, we are, we are dying of entertainment and we have become addicted to entertainment, which is of no real benefit to us other than wasting our time. So the entertainment value is the lagu. The ones who avoid the lagu will end up in, will, will be able to practice khushu. And the khushu here is that you are recognizing that when the muaddin says, when the muaddin says, hayya al falah, that this is the real true success, then that success has to trump all the other successes that you've listened to during the day. All the other 5,000 messages that you've heard about success and about glitter in this world are no way comparable to this success that the muaddin is saying so allah has given us this five daily adhan so that we can prepare so the khushu' in salah can be built and this is what this series is about it's about using the prerequisites of salah to build your mind so that it can have khushu' in salah because the mind is very difficult to focus we cannot the mind is not like a like a switch that you're focusing on one thing and i can switch it to another the mind takes time to settle and to focus, it's like water. The mind, it, 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 requires, it requires contemplation, it requires time. So that is why I said you can use your wudu for focus. As Zain al Abidin said that uh, when he trembled, they asked him, what are you, wh why are you trembling? And he said that, what did he say? He said that, bayna yaday man aqif? In front of whom I'm about to stand, do you know? So the, the wudu is used. The wudu is a form of preparation of the mind, is focusing of the mind. Then I told you about the I told you about the libas, your libas, your libas itself in preparing, preparing yourself. That that Rasulullah said that you should be man labisa ahsanatiya who wears his best clothes in preparing your clothes and knowing that Abdullah 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 ibn Umar said said to the Sahaba, Inna Allah ahaku man tuzayyin lahu that Allah is more deserving. For, uh, for whom you should beautify yourself. So in your clothes, the focus begins also. And also in your, in, your rec in your listening to the adhan. When you listen to this message and you respond, then that is also a focusing of the mind. As I said, the falah, when this verse was revealed, then khushu became part of salah, controlling of the eyes into one direction, one place. Because the eyes is through where we receive most of the messages nowadays. And when we do this, when the khushu is focused on one place, we are focused on this place is sajda. Sajda, the place where, and we will talk about this in the future, about the value of sajda in, in khushu. But to understand this, to understand the need for, a, for building your khushu, you need to, and, and that the limitations of the mind, the mind needs time. So if you have the phone at the, uh, on, your, uh, uh, on your ears up to the door of the mosque 
and you're talking to left, right, and center and about business and this and that and that. And then you arrive just before the Imam says, Allahu Akbar, your mind will not be able to focus on khushu' or on salah. Because it would be all over the world. And then before, before the Imam, the Imam will say, Salamu Alaikum, he will finish, and you will still not be able to concentrate. Your mind will be, will, thinking that, will be thinking then, how can I reconnect that call I've just broken? So from the time of the Adhan, when you hear the Adhan, this is the message to break contact with everything else. That now this is a new time, and this is why I want to focus on another shart. Shartum min, min shuruti salah, the, the, the things that are supposed to be before salah. And what is that? One of the shurut, another, uh, 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 apart from adhan, another shart is shartu duhul al waqt. And that's today's topic. Duhul al waqt. And uh, before I go, go on, I need to tell you also that the fact that we should, we usually say that we're living in these faraway lands and we don't have the opportunity to listen to Quran now, uh, to listen to adhan anymore because we're living in lands where this is not possible. But when it comes to soul-destroying, mind-destroying drama from our lands, then we can make the arrangements for te use technology to have it delivered to, into our living rooms and onto our devices. For our family, they are listening, they can watch all the dramas that are coming from our families, everything. And you know, they come to me and says to oh, Moli Saab, I'm, I'm a TV dish I put, set up a dish. Islam channel me azan sundunga to listen to adhan. And when in fact what happens is as soon as the adhan starts, we switch off the TV and said uh, we, we, we need to have tea now. Now it's time to have tea. But all we are looking at is all those dramas and our, these are soul destroying things. They're family destroying because they're teaching you in these dramas how to criticize your husband, how to criticize your wife, how to criticize. Your, your mother-in-law, how to criticize the daughter-in-law, and how to create strife in the family. These are what these dramas are about. But we are able to set up technologies for this, and we are not recognizing that Allah has made it so easy for us to listen to the adhan in the mosque, live wherever we are, and earn the reward of, by, by reading the, the dua afterwards, and be safe from shaitan during it. It is very easy now. The mosques have transmission. You can, for, a little, for a few pounds, you can buy a transmitter and have it at home. And now on the internet, mosques are transmitting their adhan live. And so I'm saying that for this, when you hear the adhan live, the time, if the time coincides, then you are allowed to read the dua and gain all the benefits from that. So let's not waste it and claim that, oh, because we're living in Britain, we cannot hear adhan. You can definitely hear adhan if you want to. If you want to use the technology, because when it comes to other things, we make use of it. We, we make arrangements for it. When we want to hear, when we want family drama and the movies and all the other stuff, then it's very easy. We know where to get it and how to arrange it. Now, for this, that will save your akhirah, that will save your mind and protect you. If you hear, if you hear adhan and then recite, if you say when the muaddin says, Hayya ala salah, hayya ala al If you say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Do you know what is the reward for that? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the sahaba, he said, Ala adulluka min kalimatin. Can I tell you a word? Min kalimatin. Min kanzim min kunuzil jannati. Can I tell you of a treasure? Of the treasures of jannah. So this is a treasure from Jannah. He said, what is it, Ya Rasulullah? And he said, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. When you say, La hawla wa la quwata, what you're actually saying is that nothing can happen without the will, without the, without the power, without the strength, without the permission of Allah. When you say that, that is a kanz, that is a treasure in, uh, in Jannah that you are benefiting from. That focuses the heart. And as I said, I said to you last week that shaitan has to run away. When the adhan is called in Oxford, he has to run 20, 36 miles away. As I said, um, that takes you beyond Bambury. And shaitan has to be away and he cannot affect you. He says to Allah, when Allah asked him, kicked him out of paradise and he said, give me, give me some respite. I will, I will prove to you that I will take them to Jahannam. And he said, okay, take. And then he said, That I will attack them from in front and from behind and from the right and from the left. I will attack them all around. But when Adhan is called, he has to run away. So his attack is embedded in all the messages that you're receiving night and day, all the time. 
and to protect yourself from that. Allah has given us this adhan. If we hear the adhan before the salah and we read this dua, the ad'iya, the, the, the dua that we are supposed to read, the masnoon dua, and we say, we repeat, Allahu Akbar, and we say Allahu Akbar, Allah is great. Then that repetition, because we are affected by, by both repetition and connection. When things, are, we are, we're, when, when, things, when things are mentioned together, then we establish a connection. Or when they are repeated, and the, the, the takbir is repeated, and then the mention of salah with falah. Because falah in this world for a Muslim is success in this world depends on success of akhirah. You know, if a person tells you that, look, I'm going to have, you'll have all the, I can give you all the good life, anything you want, I'll fulfill anything you want, give you all your wishes, make your wish, and I will fulfill it tonight. But tomorrow, I will have to kill you. Can you enjoy your life? Can you enjoy that night? No matter if he gives you everything you want, what life can there be? And if a Muslim, when a Muslim really realizes that the tragedy in forgetting where we are going, in forgetting what this plan is, that Allah has sent us here for a short while and then we have to go back to Allah. We have to stand before Allah. And in recognizing that, when, the, when that mu'addin says, Hayya alil falah, that is the success. That is the true success that we are preparing to go when we go and stand. We are, we are preparing to go for to stand in front of Allah to get that success that today I'm about to get. Because what happens? Now, this... this Topic that I wanted to talk about, but we are running out of time. We will have to continue next week. But I'll give you a brief introduction this week, and then we'll continue next week. The next prerequisite that we can use for building khushu in salah is the prerequisite of time. Because time is one of the conditions of salah. Dukhul al-waqt, the beginning of time. To teach time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent angel Gabriel, Jibreel alayhi salam, to spend two days with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This is so important that he sent him to spend two whole days praying each salah, one after the other. And he taught him how to pray from this time to this time is fajr, this time to this time is this prayer and this prayer, all. And then he says that hadha, he said to him that this is, this the salah hadha waqtul anbiya min qablik. That this, these are the times of prayer for the salawat, for the, for the prayers of all the prophets before you. They were praying. He taught him the time. So this is fixed. We have a time. And there is great hikmah, there is great wisdom in these times. But the first thing is that it is compulsory that we are to recognize time. And when you recognize the dukhul, with dukhul the time, the time of prayer, because the human being it orients themselves for the future with time. Time orientation is something we all practice. When you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? Can anyone tell me? What's the first thing we do when you wake up in the morning? You check the time. That's the thing you do. You're supposed to say, Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahyana. Praise be to Allah who has brought me back to life. But what do we do? And why do you do that? Because you want to orient your day. You want to fix the direction of your day. What am I going to do now? So you check your time. If you don't have time, if you haven't checked your time, you orient yourself in your time, then you don't know what else to do. And the orientation of what you are going to do one after the other is dependent on what value you have in your life. What, what is of value in your life? If the things of a value is that today I'm going to go to work and make, and make lots of money, I'm, I'm going to go and go into my business and make lots of money, that's an orientation of value. Now, in our understanding of the value for the future, when, when we hear the adhan, the adhan is dukhul al-waqt. When the waqt, when the time starts, there is a command of Allah is renewed upon you for salah. So what is the orientation of our future for that particular moment? That has to be reckoned in our mind. We have to make that clear. That look, what is of more value? Because we say that we value Qur'an, we say we value Akhirah, we say we value Salah, but is it really? Where the test is, is how we allocate our time. And that is evident in the way we see the value of the career of our children, the academic career of our children, and their success in Akhirah. When a child reaches Bulugh, when a child is mature, when he reaches maturity, then that child has to wake up for Salat al-Fajr. They are supposed to be awakened. But we find it difficult to wake them up for Salat al-Fajr. But when it comes to their career, their academic career for going to school, even in the winter 
when it is dark in the mornings, we drag them out of bed, you have to go to school. Because the value of their life in this world, the value of their success in, the, in their career and in their academic life is such that Salat al-Fajr is below it. This is what Adhan was supposed to do. When we hear the Adhan, Hayya ala al-Falah, that Falah, the success in, for your deen is more valuable than all of the world because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man faatahu salatul asri. If you miss one salah in your life, that is value. If you want to know value, then know this. That if the value of one salah is more valuable than all the wealth you, can, you will have in your whole life. Your, all, all your wealth and all your family and all their wealth, everything they will have. Man fatahu salatul asri fakaannama wutira ahluhu wa maluhu. Who misses one prayer, one salatul asr. If he misses salatul one salatul asr, it is more damaging, it is more than losing all the wealth that you will ever accumulate in your whole life and all your family. That is the value of one salah in relation to this world. As for its value in akhirah, then it is, in, it, 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 you cannot, it's infinite, you cannot measure it. So may Allah give us this. Inshallah next week we will continue talking, we will continue on the use of our time to build khushu, to build concentration in our salah before salah. And as we are saying that this program that we are doing is to go through using wudu to build khushu, using our, using our clothes to build khushu, using adhan to build khushu, and using now time to build khushu, concentration in salah. May Allah give us concentration, give us khushu in salah, and, and raise our status through it, and accept our prayer, and build us so that our salah will become mi'raj, like it did for the sahaba. Wa jazakumullahu khaira, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatum. تبارك الله رب العالمين